This lesson is going to be about molar pregnancies and their complications. Gestational trophoblastic diseases, complete mole and partial mole, also incomplete mole, are caused by a failed fertilization event, diaspermy. The gestational trophoblastic neoplasms, which could be a potential consequence of gestational trophoblastic diseases, is going to be taught to you in this lesson as one entity. In the basic sciences, I called out invasive mole from choriocarcinoma from placental blah, 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 blah. In reality, clinical practice, what you're going to see is gestational trophoblastic neoplasms tend to be a sequela of gestational trophoblastic diseases, and women are being followed with serial HCGs. So you very rarely get, and you almost never need, tissue because all gestational trophoblastic neoplasms are treated the same way. So let's start off by talking about the gestational trophoblastic diseases, the molar pregnancies. Before I do, vent my gripe. When the French surgeon who first did an autopsy on the first molar pregnancy, it was huge. It was slow growing, and when it was probably a partial mole. But because there was no way to fix it in the 1500s, the woman died of it. It was enormous, heavy, and hard. So that surgeon used the word mola for millstone in Latin because millstones are very large, hard, and heavy and have been in use in human civilization for millennia. They're used to grind up grains. So the physical description of the thing that he was seeing got translated into how we name it. The word mole means nothing in relation to this condition. This is a gestational trophoblastic disease, and it is a failed fertilization event, diaspermy. There are complete moles, and even though it's a misnomer, it's so prevalent for people to talk about molar pregnancies, complete and partial moles, I'm going to continue the erroneous nomenclature. Complete and partial moles. Both complete moles and partial moles are a product of diaspermy. Now there is another way for you to get this genetic relationship with only one sperm, but the mechanism doesn't matter. And since you can't inform this mechanism and you can't impact the next, just learn it as both being diaspermy. It'll help keep straight complete from partial moles. A partial mole has one failure of fertilization, only the diaspermy event. That means the diaspermy event with a normal oocyte. This causes there to be three complements of DNA, a triploid nucleus. Two spermal, one oocyte, this has six, D9 chromosomes. But it's only one failure of fertilization, therefore it's going to be the least severe of the diseases. Whereas a complete mole is the product of two failures of fertilization, both dispermy and an empty ovum. which means there's only going to be two sets of DNA, but they're both spermal. So there's a normal number because there are two failures of fertilization, both diaspermy and an empty oocyte, complete mole is going to be worse. The pathogenesis, that it is a complete, completely 
molar. Completely molar means no evidence of an embryo, only the chorion. It is also completely chromosomal. That is, it has the normal number of chromosomes, but it's completely spermal. The second failure, empty oocyte. And on pathology, it will be completely hydropic. Hydropic means full of fluid. In the complete mole, all the chorionic villi are hydropic. They're all filled with fluid. And most importantly in the pathogenesis, a complete mole is a tumor of the syncytio trophoblasts. The trophoblast, gestational trophoblastic disease, the outer cell mass, the chorion, the placenta, all the same thing, differentiated into syncytiotrophoblasts and cytotrophoblasts. The syncytiotrophoblasts is actually the one syncytiotrophoblast. It is a multinucleated cell. As new cells divide and differentiate a daughter, they lose the plasma membrane, becoming a giant amalgam of nuclei and cytoplasm. That's the thing that burrows into the endometrium looking for blood vessels. It also makes HCG. And since this is a cancer of syncytiotrophoblasts, it's going to grow quickly and make a lot of HCG. The patient presentation is going to be caused by that elevated HCG. Hyperemesis gravidarum. Super morning sickness. So bad, the patient cannot tolerate PO, becomes dehydrated, can't eat, so develops a ketosis, metabolic acidosis, volume depletion, nausea, vomiting, hyperemesis gravidarum. An elevate HCG, which acts on LH receptors, can stimulate mature follicles to get bigger, to grow, because they express LH receptors. Therefore, an elevated HCG in the setting of a complete mole can lead to bilateral fecal lutein cysts. They represent overgrown, mature, but normal follicles. And the elevated HCG can actually cause hyperthyroidism. If it grows fast, leads to an increased uterine size for dates. This usually doesn't happen anymore because the diagnosis is caught early on. But also you have to be, watch out for multi-field gestation causing elevated HCG and increased size for dates. Not just moles do this. And you might also see a grape-like mass coming out of the cervical os. Grape-like because like chorionic villi that are hydropic, a grape is a round thing that's translucent and full of fluid like the chorionic villi. You've already got an elevated HCG, and in the setting of all of this happening, what you want to do is get a transvaginal ultrasound. And that's going to show you a snowstorm appearance. There will not be an embryo for a complete mole. The best way to diagnose is to do a dilation and curatage. The treatment depends on whether or not she desires fertility. These happen in the extremes of age, teenage years or in their 40s. So if they've already had a bunch of kids and do not desire future fertility, eliminate the chance of this happening again. Remove uterus, hysterectomy. If she does desire future fertility, and we need to make sure she is clear of this thing, the gest gestational trophoblastic disease, and does not develop a gestational trophoblastic neoplasm. That means that after doing the DNC, find reliable contraception that is not an IUD. This diagnosis contraindicates the IUD, not that the IUDs are bad. And then she gets serial HCGs. 
every month for six months once she reaches zero. I'll explain that after I explain partial moles. And gestational trophoblastic diseases that are complete moles have a higher risk for developing gestational trophoblastic neoplasms than do partial moles. Knowing what you know about complete mole, you can simply just do the opposite for partial mole. It is only partially molar, which means there can be an embryo, and even in heartbeat. But this is a an triploid embryo. It will abort. You cannot save it. And this has to come out, otherwise, otherwise it will kill mom. It is partially chromosomal. It has an abnormal number of chromosomes, 69. It is partially spermal. That is because the oocyte is normal. And on gross, it'll only be partially hydropic. So not all, only some of the villi are engorged. And most importantly, the opposite of complete mole is, is that the cells are the cytotrophoblasts. Cytotrophoblasts follow the syncytiotrophoblasts. They don't grow quickly and they don't produce HCG. Thus, what you're going to see is much milder disease. It's going to be asymptomatic and the woman is going to believe that she's experiencing a normal pregnancy. But when she goes in for her first ultrasound, the ultrasound is going to show a snowstorm. The diagnostic steps and the treatment are essentially the same. And here's why reliable contraception is necessary. A healthy fertilization and implantation of a healthy embryo is going to elevate the HCG. And you have to make sure that that doesn't happen because what you're going to do is track HCG levels. HCG on the y-axis, time on the x-axis. If, rem if you remove the source of HCG, the cytotrophoblast, the complete mole, what's going to happen is there's going to be a rapid decline the HCG to zero. Then it should stay there for six months. If it does that, no risk of GTN. But instead, if there's a plateau or a rise in the HCG, or worse, it goes to zero and then much later begins to rise, All of these tell you that she's got gestational trophoblastic neoplasm and she needs to be treated. Gestational trophoblastic neoplasms can arise from a molar pregnancy. In fact, most of them do. But they can also arise from a spontaneous abortion. They can even arise from a live birth. The reason for that is the molar pregnancies are the result of a dispermy, fertilization event. Gestational trophoblastic neoplasms can arise any time there is successful implantation of the placenta. Successful placentation. Though most arise are secondary to molar pregnancies. Now, and if it is secondary to a molar pregnancy and she's being treated, she's on reliable contraception. And so the only way that an HCG can rise is if there's a GTN. So most of the time, a GTN is going to be diagnosed in an asymptomatic patient being treated for GTD 
who has a rise in the HCG. That alone is enough to treat. No tissue is needed, no imaging is needed. Or, unless it get out of control, there's going to be signs and symptoms of metastases. Now, I do not want you learning the different types of GTN, but the two you should be aware of are going to be the locally invasive mole that does not metastasize but burrows into the uterus. This is going to present with vaginal bleeding. And choriocarcinoma, which loves to go to the lungs, which will present with hemoptysis. If the diagnosis is after a gestational trophoblastic disease, you need to do no workup. If it's new, it's the same as before, transvaginal ultrasound, then dilation and curatage. The treatment is dependent on the stage. You will not have to calculate stage, but things like what type of pregnancy preceded the GTN, how old the patient is, how high the HCG is, how many metastases there are, and what sites are involved all go into calculating the, the stage. But what you're going to see is it's obviously going to be ridiculously high in risk or anything else. And what that comes down to is low risk and high risk. High risk is going to have many, many metastases all over the place, including the brain. Low risk is going to be lungs or uterus. If low risk, the only treatment that's needed is methotrexate. You can also use actinomycin D, but since it has more side effects than methotrexate and both are equally as efficacious, pick methotrexate. The two of them together do not do better for low risk. If it's high risk, you're going to need multiple agents. That's methotrexate and actinomycin D and etoposide and carboplatin. You usually do not get tissue. No surgeries, no debulking. The follow-up is to get reliable contraception. To treat until the HCG gets down to zero, then get values every month, for 12 months after reaching zero. And the good news is, even though we're talking about metastasis, and metastasis usually means high stage and fatal, the cure rates, not just remission, the cure rate for low risk with single agent chemotherapy is 95 to 100%. And for high risk, which is someone riddled with metastases, the cure rate is 50 to 75%. Cure rate, not remission. All right, we talked about gestational trophoblastic neoplasms, complete moles and partial moles. Learn complete, extrapolate partial, knowing that partial is really not that bad. It's a result of only one failure of fertilization, diaspermy whereas complete mole is a combination of an empty oocyte and dispermy leading to a normal complement, normal number of chromosomes, but it's all spermal. Completely molar, completely chromosomal, 46, completely spermal, empty oocyte, completely hydropic. Syncytiotrophoblasts grow quickly and make HCG, therefore present with hyperemesis gravidarum, bilateral thetian cysts, hyperthyroidism, increased size for date, scrape like mass. You're looking for snowstorm pattern, and a dilation and curatage to prove it. If no fertility is desired, she's over 40, has a bunch of kids, hysterectomy. If fertility is desired, and that's gonna be in a teenager, after the DNC, reliable contraception and serial HCGs every month until six months of zero. You do that to catch 
gestational trophoblast. 